uh, Director Free, at former FBI director, is so complimentary of you and came by even though uh, he had struggled a bit to make sure that we knew that he thought you were exceptional. Your background is good background for this job, and the Atlanta office has always been a good office, and um, it's the King and Spalding team with um, former Attorney General Griffin Bell is a good firm to have been associated with, that's for sure. Um, but it tends to be a political world at the top of the Department of Justice. And I guess my first question to follow up on is, do you understand that in this political world, there'll be people calling, demanding, pushing, insisting on things that they do not know what they're asking for and could indeed be corrosive of the rule of law, could diminish the respect the Department of Justice has, could diminish um, the rule of law in the United States. And uh, are you aware of that? Maybe you've already learned that in the time you've been there. Well, you're right, Senator. I'm, I'm not from here. Um, I've only been here for a couple of months. Um, but I can tell you, I am committed to the Department of Justice. I love our department. I care deeply about our mission, and I would do everything in my power to protect the integrity that is the Department of Justice. Uh, I'd say that shouldn't take you too long to say, no, this isn't right. Well, I agree, Senator. I think what I was telling you was that that was certainly my gut reaction to it. But if I'm going to be doing battle with anybody, I want to make sure I have the law and the facts and the, um, and the precedent behind me to be able to give a reasoned judgment. And if I'm in a discussion where people have different views, I want to make sure I've got what I need to back up my views. Well, um, you have to watch out because people will be asking you to do things you need, just need to say no about. Do you think the Attorney General has a responsibility to say no to the President uh, if he asks for something that's improper? A lot of people have defended the Lynch nomination, for example, by saying, well, he appoints somebody who's going to execute his views. What's wrong with that? But if the views the President wants to execute are unlawful, should the Attorney General or the Deputy Attorney General say no? Uh, Senator, I believe that the Attorney General or the Deputy Attorney General has an obligation to follow the law and the Constitution and to give their independent legal advice to the President. And um, like any CEO with a law firm, sometimes the lawyers have to tell the CEO, Mr. CEO, you can't do that. Don't do that. We'll get us sued. It's going to be in violation of the law. You'll regret it, please, no matter how headstrong they might be. Do you feel like that's the duty uh, of the Attorney General's office? I do believe that that's the duty of the Attorney General's office, to fairly and impartially evaluate the law and to provide the President and the administration with impartial legal advice. And um, just as in a fraud case uh, or any other drug case you might have prosecuted, excellently, it appears, over the years. Um, an immigra immigration law is important to be consistently and effectively enforced, should it not? I believe that all of our laws should be consistently and effectively enforced and within the confines of the Constitution. Well, that's a good answer, but they're not being. So you're taking over as a deputy to the uh, Attorney General of the United States of America, and we have a just a uh, collapse of integrity in immigration enforcement uh, and the president's uh, position on executive amnesty just accelerates the collapse of integrity resulting in, for example, the lowest morale uh, in the Department of Homeland Security officers who enforce the law of any department in the entire government. They've even sued their supervisors because they're being told to not follow their oath to enforce the law, but to carry out political uh, policies. There's a lawsuit over that. They sued their bosses over that. And I think they're correct. Now, I remember John Ashcroft is uh, uh, Attorney General for Bush, and he's been celebrated for being in... When he was in the hospital, they tried to get him to sign a document uh, that um, uh, dealt with uh, terrorism that he thought went too far, he refused to do so. 
So I hope that you feel free to say no uh, uh, in the character of John Ashcroft and others who said no to President Nixon on certain issues. Let me just ask you briefly this question. I'd like to have a clear answer, if I could. Do you think that the president's executive action announced on November 20th uh, is legal and constitutional? Can you give us a yes or no answer? Well, Senator, since mid-January, I've been serving as the acting deputy attorney general of the Department of Justice. And the Department of Justice is currently litigating this matter. And so since I'm the acting deputy attorney general of the Department of Justice when it's litigating this, it's really not appropriate for me to give you my personal opinion about this matter or any other matter that the Department of Justice is litigating. This well, the only thing I care about is your official position. So your official position is you're defending the president's action in court. Isn't that correct? The Department of Justice has filed pleadings with its position, and I stand by those pleadings. Thank you.